So welcome everybody. Welcome to um, healing the womb. This 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 session is about healing the womb, and today is October the twenty sixth, twenty twenty three. The reason why I um, chose this topic, healing the womb, is is was because um, lately I've been. I think there's a lot uh, uh, a few convergence of ideas, but. The idea of the creator, um, uh, going back to being the creator, is really coming to the forefront. And for me, the the womb, um, <clears throat> in a woman, is is really the the symbol of creation, because that's where we actually create the uh, a child. And you know, it's creating a child is both a physical and a metaphysical um, act. And we don't know all the met metaphysical part of it. We only know about the, you know, what the physical experience of it is like. But we, as a human being, we actually can create another human being. And that is, if you think about it, that is absolutely miraculous to be able to do that. And that all happens in the womb. So the womb is a special area. Apart, of, of course, it's maybe not as important as the heart. However, as a creator, which is um, really all of us are on the journey of stepping back into that, into being a the creator of our own lives. Um, for a long time, we've actually have had someone else create our reality for us because we forgot that we are actually um, the creator of our own own life, of our own experiences. We have actually um, given that power away for a long, long time. And it's time now for us to reclaim that power. That's why I want to um, start to on that journey of just healing our own womb and also healing our own creation power and and also um i think lately i um it's it's not just me i i'm quite sure a lot of other people have had that experience is um because of the last couple of years <clears throat> the society has been very much divided um some think that oh you should you, like like you should have a mask on or you shouldn't have a mask on you should um be afraid of uh, a virus or, or you should trust your own body so there are so many divisive um, opinions floating around and families uh, also because of isolation so a lot of family members have um drifted away and we are coming out of that now and we we're starting to find our way back into to each other's life and also to reconcile all our differences and because we are all coming back together um in in oneness and and also what's happening in the family is just the the, the microcosm of the macrocosm so that is really what we are trying to do is to come together and to, um, I would say, respect each other's journey and respect each other's opinions and, and be able to find a way so that we can actually work with each other um, as one family rather than trying to, to point fingers and trying to you know, kill one another um, starting another war and maybe even um, uh, another world war. So like all this is up in the air now. Is Are we actually going to go into um, another world war? Well, we we all have a say in that. Um, it's not up to some government officials to decide that. It really is not. We actually, each one of us um, can decide that. What do we want in our reality? What do we want to experience? So that's why this this um, this comes about is to healing the womb and also uh, reclaiming our 
ability as the creator of our own lives, of our own experience as well. So um, let me see if I have missed anything. So this is kind of the, the, the preamble of why I picked this um, topic tonight. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> okay, so kind of this is um, this is the first part of it. This is why I want to pick this topic. I, I picked this topic as well, and I, I also want to um, <clears throat> share that you know. Um, I find in my with with it like also the other reason was that like I I, I find um the last the last week or two is um I would say because of the energy and also I'm I'm also working out some um internal conflicts as well and I I know when I was working on myself I. I actually um, find that um, my hormones are, are out of whack. And also when in my dreams, I actually was working out um, the, the to have a better relationship with the rest of my family and more so like more specifically with my kids. So then, and thinking of kids, it's, it's all about creation, all about the womb. So that's also part of the reason why I want to um, have this topic tonight is really to heal the womb area. Um, so the womb is really symbolized so many things. And yeah, if it kind of seems like it's all women's issue, but it's it's actually not because um, being a woman is only <laughs> I, I I'm just. <clears throat> so I was just um, laughing because, you know, <laughs> um, there are so many genders now. Um, so it, it's not just, you know, male and, and female, men and women anymore. There there are, I don't know, the last thing unless I heard is at least four or five, if not 24 or five um, different genders now. And uh, however, physically, there are still just two there's still just two genders. So <clears throat> um, it's not a, the, the womb is really um, not just about being a woman as well. It's also about, um, because we are all actually birthing a, a new human experience. So whether we, um, no matter what our um, body's gender may be, we are all creators and we are all coming together to create a new future, every one of us. So we are all birthing the, the, the new earth experience together. So that's, so for that reason, I'm, I believe that, you know, healing the womb is actually a appropriate beginning for for this this journey and before I go into um, more I actually just want to um, just come together because for whatever reason lately I haven't been meditating um, not that I don't like meditation or that I don't do at all is I used to do meditation mechanically every day and I just stopped doing that and I only meditate whenever I feel I needed to or I just um, do things in a way that still puts me in a meditative state however I really feel that you know um, I would like to have a presence meditation with all of you um, just a short a short one before we go any further so Let's just do that first. And um, so shift your body around <clears throat> and um, find a place where you can be comfortable or a position that you, you can put your body in that is com comfortable for at least the, the next four or five minutes. So, so do that. And when you feel you're in a comfortable position, then just take in a deep breath. 
through your nose. And slowly breathe out. And then breathe in deeply and slowly again. And breathe out slowly through your nose. Breathe in one more time, deeply and slowly through your nose. And breathe out. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for your body. Just intentionally breathe into your body and notice everything that is going on in your body. In other words, put your attention on yourself, on your body more specifically. And just allow yourself to just quietly observe yourself breathing a few more times. And each time when you breathe out, allow your body to just let go of some stress. Whatever stress that you can feel in your body, wherever it is that feels tight, yes, consciously, ask that part of your body to soften, to just let go. As you let go, just allow your body to be comfortable and to shift into whatever position that is most natural for your body when it is in a rest mode. When you feel your body becoming more peaceful and relaxed, and then shift your focus into your heart. And just imagine that you can breathe right into your heart. And put your focus on your heart. And just pay attention to what's going on in your heart. How does it feel when it is receiving all this extra oxygen? And after a while, when you feel your thoughts becoming more calm, accept the next intention is to call back all of your energy all of your attention, call them all back to you. Be very intentionally selfish in this moment to call back all of your attention to yourself. All of your attention all of your energy back to you and make you, make your body, mind, and soul the only focus that you have in this moment. And come into this moment as well. Never mind about what happened an hour ago or even five seconds ago. 
and don't even think about what's going to happen in the next minute. Just be with yourself completely in this moment. And let this moment be all that you have, all that you care about. And let yourself, mind, body, and soul be the only thing that you care about in this moment. And just breathe. And when you feel that you're all here in this moment, and take another deep breath in. And then come all the way back into the room. And open your eyes if you had them closed before. So welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> Um, okay, just want to talk about a couple of things um, before I start into the healing part, into, you know, doing some, shifting some quantum energy and quantum patterns with all of you is that, um, yeah. <clears throat> I, I, we were talking a little earlier that um, some of us um, have parts of our, our reproductive organs being removed. And so, you know, when we're healing our womb, but, you know, the parts are not there. So what happens? So how do we heal something that is not even there? Um, don't worry about it. <clears throat> because I have one thing that I really want to impress upon all of you to re remember. And I know that it's not easy to remember. We, we're so accustomed to thinking that, you know, I am this body. That you know, if this body is broken, I am this you know too bad <laughs> because this body is broken, so I can't. There's nothing I can do. Um, uh, some people think that you know, wow, if we if we have pain in our body, we can't we can't ascend because you know we're broken, we're not whole. How do we ascend when um like we're barely hanging? together our body is barely hanging together and so first thing i want to mention is that you yes you, there is a physical body you have a physical body but part of the creation part of like your body your body is one of your own creation as well because when i say your own creation i'm not saying um, the egoic part. I'm saying that it's your soul, actually, your essence actually created this body for you to experience this reality. But, but the way to create a body is that you have a template. So your soul actually, um, before the physical body is created, it has a, a template of your body, which is um, kind of like a blueprint of your body and your blueprint is still intact even though the the um you may have you know some limbs missing or you may have you know hip replacement you know, some some other parts in your body however that is that does not take away from you as an eternal essence you're not your body you create your body. Your body is your own creation. And the state of your body actually gives you some idea of um, what you want to experience here. And if you don't like 
with your experience here is that you can actually create different experience. And it is it is possible. It is very possible. Um, I, I can give you a few, or at, at the very least, um, like two, three examples, um, one of which is, is myself as well. So the first example I think um, a lot of you know already is Joe Dispenza. I forgot the, the, the story because it's, it's been a long time since I heard it is um, one of the, the stories that he had an accident and his back was broken. I, I forgot how, into how, it, how badly it was broken, but bad enough that um, the doctors told him that, you know, don't expect to, that you'll be able to, you know, walk again or, or be able to um, live a normal life again. However, he didn't like that. He, because he is um, more determined. He's determined to live a normal life. Um, so he didn't, he didn't um, pay much attention to his doctor. He, he knew that it's not going to be an easy journey, but he taught his body how, how he wants his body to function. So he taught his body. He taught his body what's the, the, the first vertebra and then the second vertebra and how they're supposed to stack one on top of the other, how they connect. Like he, he taught his body how he wanted the body his body to um, function. So we can do that. Um, yes, our body may, we may have accidents or we may have, you know, through, through different circumstances, there may be things that our body is out of whack, but that does not mean that we cannot um, teach the body to come back into um, the way we wanted it to. So that's one example. The other example was one that um, Chris Duncan, I mentioned Chris Duncan. So he's the creator of um, Magnetic Mind. And he worked with one of his clients, I forgot. I think his name is George or, but like I'm, I'm not completely certain of that. But anyways, his, his client cannot see from, so, However, he did not work with his client as though, you know, yeah, sorry, you, you can't see. So he actually asked his client how he wanted his life to be. So he taught his client how to um, <clears throat> create his own eyesight again. And I, I, I forgot how many times they worked together. but. Um, it just so happened that his client actually regained his sight. So, yes, our body has a way that it functions in a way, and our body does a lot of things for us. However, our body is our creation, and we have a say in it. If we can let go of all the um, the, the, the feeling of being a victim, that we are victim of circumstances or, and we can actually let go of all of that and really step into the creatorship within ourselves, being the creator. We can actually create you know, or recreate our body, retrain our body to function the way we actually wanted it to. Um, third example was uh, Anelia Benz. So Anelia had some major injuries because um, as a young woman, she was very headstrong. So she really did a number to, to her body and it was quite broken at, at some point. <clears throat> um, he actually, she actually challenged, I think, um, also, you know, she she kind of challenged. Um, I forgot whether it's an evil spirit or something. That and um, it, so the the result was that his body, her body was very ill at one point in her life, 
and she knew she was, you know, okay, yeah. She's really having a, a lot of challenge in her body. So, but because she is who she is, so she knows that, you know, um, she knows that she is the creator of her body. And so she just used her imagination. She's trying to feel health in her body. And she does that maybe just and manage to do that a couple of minutes each day, even though at the other times during the day, she just feels pain and all of the, the, <clears throat> the, the discomforts in her body, but she never flinched. She knew that it's possible that she can recreate a body. So she took just a couple of minutes each day to start to put herself on that journey of rebuilding her body, regaining her health. And so if you see her today, you would never have guessed that at one point in her life, she was not even able to sit up straight. <laughs> so, and also myself, I went through that journey as well as because um, one of my, um, my left leg, I was having a lot of trouble with it. And at one point I like you know, I, I love to go for walks, but at one point I, I had trouble even walking. Um, not for a long period of time, but for a span of maybe about a month or so, I was having trouble walking very long or just even when I walk, I feel I wouldn't say excruciating pain, but I do feel that there is a pain in my in my stride so and that that is not I do not accept that so that so I really worked on myself and um working out that and healing my own body in a way so that now when I go walk no problem at all um occasionally yes I do feel that you know my my legs need some attention However, for the most part, it is, I would say, 95% better than it was last year. So to that we can definitely heal our own body. That's, that's not even a, um, it's, it's not even a question in my mind. The, the thing is, you have to teach your body how you want it to be. And also... Um, do give your body all the, the what it needs, the right nutrition, the right attention, the right um, frame of mind to teach your body to get back into health. And that is something that we can all do. And just because you have parts of your body missing doesn't mean that you're toast and there's nothing you can do. Um, our body is created in such a way that um, when one part of, of your body is um, out, even though it may be a very important part of your body, like your um, reproductive organs, um, we don't just need it when we are trying to have a baby. We actually, they, it, it's part of our endocrine system. Those, those uh, organs, they actually um, do serve a purpose in regulating our hormonal um, levels. So when something like that is, is taken out of the body, it's no longer there. It doesn't mean that, okay, our hormones is just, you know, out the window, we, we can never have good hormones anymore. Because your endocrine system is not just one organ or two organs. It's, the, there are, um, it's always a, a backup. So, because your body is a, a whole that works with each other. And when one part is, for whatever reason, no longer being able to function properly, then the other parts would step in to fill the gap as much as it can. And so that's that's how our body works. It's, um, it is a holistic um, function. It's, it's a miraculous holistic functioning machine it's something that um we actually know so little 
But even with all the, the medical advances that we have nowadays, there's still so much about our body that we don't know. And that, that's one thing. And also, um, just want to let you know that, yes, a lot of, at this point, we are in the, the change of energy. We are in the, the ascension window now. Um, I'm not saying, I'm not promising that, you know, tomorrow or in two weeks time or even two years time that we'll, we are, we're all going to be ascended. Nobody knows when that's going to happen. Um, and I don't want to know as well. That is, everyone has that, have to um, walk that journey ourselves. However, just to let you know that at the, the point of global ascension, I'm not just, I'm not saying that, you know, it's individually, whenever you're ready, whenever you let go of the, the inverted matrix, whenever you let go of the, the negativity in your um in your own personality structure and all that, you're good to ascend individually. But a global ascension is another event. So at the point of global ascension, um, our body, like everyone's body is going to be reset anyways. We get new bodies. We get, um, we will look very different. Not, well, okay, not very different. We still somewhat look like what we look like now however um the the how our body function is is going to be very different from what it is functioning right now because um at the point where the global ascension actually takes place there is going to be so much more um changes our all our sense all our senses would be would have a much wider range right now our senses has a very limited range and just to so that we can have this experience so um yes whatever state your body may be in currently it's not um it's it's it may make it harder for you to ascend but it, it is not going to um prevent you from it nothing can prevent that how you uh, whether you want to ascend to the fifth dimension to play in the new playground that's a soul choice so nothing can prevent that not the state of your body not whether you um, have taken any um, medication that is going to block you, nothing like that. It's a soul choice. When you, when at a soul level you chose to do that, then your, your soul will also um, assist you in creating a path for you to make that happen. So, um, so let's see what else. So, so any questions about any so far what I've mentioned? Any questions, comments so far before I continue on? <clears throat> okay, no question. Wonderful. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> so going back to Chris Duncan, um, one thing that I really learned is, is that if we want to create a new reality for ourselves, that, um, we have to do something, not just, it, it is not just, um, Thinking about it, we have to actually take some action. And that's one thing from last weekend that I, like one exercise that he gave us that I really loved. And I just want to share with all of you one of his, 
the, the one thing he mentioned is that <clears throat> the thing that is most important is something called um, morning rituals. So at the, the beginning of the day is just take a few minutes to set up the rest of your day. It doesn't matter whether you are, um, how busy you are, just it's not something that is going to take a lot of time. Just um, it, it can take just a few minutes and spare a few minutes for yourself each day, each morning to set the whole day up properly. So what um, morning rituals consist of? He suggested four things, four core, um, four core things that we to uh, focus on, four core choices. So, and I would share his four choices. And um, if you resonate with them, perfect. You can you can just go with those four choices. If not, then make up your own. However, it is make up your own. the The thing is, if you want to create something different in your life, then the the least you can do is actually just set up your day early in the day. First thing in the day, the morning ritual is to set it up so that you know, so that you it's it's like you set a direction for yourself. For the rest of the day. So the four core choices, according to him, the first one is I choose to live. I choose to live my true nature and purpose. And um, you don't have to write this down. I can actually send these to you if you like. So just just listen and see how that hits you. The first, the first choice is to, I choose to live my true nature and purpose. Uh, if these words um, does not resonate with you, um, then choose something that resonates with you. So it's not just to choose, not just to say that to yourself. It's not really affirmation. So you make the choice. And so you repeating that choice to yourself that this is what I choose. I choose to live my true um, nature and purpose. And then the next step is, so what can I do today that is going to take me one step closer to that? So it's not just about a mantra. It's not about saying something. It's actually about taking some action. So what is one thing that you can do today that will take you closer to doing, to being able to do that? So then you, whatever answer comes to you, it could be um, to read a book or not even a whole, the whole book, but to read um, maybe, you know, take 20 minutes to read a book from a book that um, really resonates with your true purpose. So it could be as simple as that. So you choose an action. It could be a big step or it could be a small step. It's, it really depends on what you think you can do that day and to actually commit to doing that during the day. And the next choice is I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. We have given the, the creative force to society, to a lot of people, places, and things outside of ourselves. So it really resonates with, with me that we take that power back. It's, I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. Is to actually claim that for yourself and then ask yourself, what is one step, one action I can do today that will help me do that? So it could be that you choose to create something for yourself. 
for example, create a nourishing meal for yourself or um, make sure that no matter how busy your day is, is to take half an hour for yourself to do something for yourself. So it could be as simple as that. So just, just making that commitment to once you have chosen what it is that you can do, one step that you can take to get yourself closer to that ideal is to actually do that. And then the next choice is I choose to live a life I love. Who can argue with that? <laughs> really? <clears throat> we all want to do that. So I choose to live a life that I love. And then you ask yourself this question. What is the one thing that I can do today? So we talk, we're not talking about creating an elaborate plan that is going to take five years or five, you know, well, how long, however long to, to, to do is just one thing, one thing that you can do today. So just that will take you closer to that. So whatever comes to your mind, then um, really commit to doing that one thing. And then the fourth one and the last one is I choose to be healthy and vital. And that is very important that we choose to become healthy and, and then think of one thing that we can do today that is going to bring us a little bit closer to that. It could be as simple as, you know, go for a walk or do some jumping jacks or do some yoga. So, so those are the four core choices. Sorry, uh, Vinny, what yeah. was the third one? I may have missed the, the third one. The third one is I choose to live a life I love. Oh, choose to live a life. Okay. Got it. So, um, so that that I just want to share with you all of you all that is to just take five minutes in the morning, and you don't even have to get up for that. Maybe before you get out of bed is to just go over all those things in your mind and just choose, pick one thing, one one thing that you can do that day that will take you a little bit closer to that. And if you're already living all these four things, then beautiful, wonderful. Then set your um, sight to the next step, whatever it is, is to choose a goal, whatever in your life that you want, that you really want to create. And then ask yourself, what is the one thing that I can do in my life that will take me one step closer to that and just commit to doing that thing? And um, it's, it's, it's one step at a time, in one day at a time that we get closer and closer to being able to live to our fullest. And um, okay. Any other any questions? <clears throat> Comments? If not. Then this may not be related, but I have a question. Sure. Um, Go ahead. Um, is it possible to bring uh, something back from your past, uh, like a like a good uh, a healthy body or healthy 
emotions or something from your past life where you had where you tell your consciousness that to pick out which year you had that in your past life that you can bring it into this present have you heard anything like that okay um I would, can you do that? Um, absolutely you can, but why would you want to do that? Do you feel yourself or feel better? <clears throat> um, to feel better. Okay, so I just feel like a, like how uh, Sifu used to tell us that we can replace some body part by bringing it in. Yeah. We can replace a damaged body part with another organ. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, you can, but you can actually create it yourself yeah but that takes time <laughs> do you can you go back in your past lives you know all your past lives all my past life I haven't Most ever tried I haven't ever tried um no. Yeah. Do you know how many you had? <laughs> like for me, it's not relevant. So I haven't, I haven't really tried. Because mm -hmm. the past life, I have already experienced it. So what yeah. I, so if, if something I experienced in the past life is relevant in this life, then it will come up naturally i don't have to go dig it okay i don't have to actually go go dig into it so um if it's relevant it will come up for you not for everybody I'm asking because Cornelius was doing that in one or two sessions and he seems to think that we can do that. Um, we can, yes. Why? Like I said, you know, people have a lot of issues in their body and they, it takes time to do it mentally or by manifesting and all that. So this is like you ask your consciousness in which life did you have? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's one of the ways to do it. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, because uh, people uh, have this strong belief sometimes that you know genetically everybody has that cancer in the family like so they have that belief and then to remove that belief this sort of thing can help with it and even if the yeah. doctors try to tell you different you can everybody has cancer in their cells yeah yeah everybody yeah. has cancer cells but uh, when, when the... it manifests i mean when it actually manifests yeah. Yeah. So if you're talking about um, family patterns, so so it is really you're working with the family patterns. Yeah, but uh, like uh, in my family, my grandmother, both sides, and my mother all had diabetes. Doesn't mean that I have diabetes. I never believed like that. I always took precautions, and I'm sure that I will never have diabetes. 
Okay. There are so many. There are so many things that I um, that I can talk to about that. Mm -hmm. uh, one is if you look at diabetes symbolically, what does it mean? No, pancreas are not producing in insulin. So usually, diabetes, if you look at it symbolically, is about sugar. It's about sweetness. Yeah. So, so how? So it's about um, your relationship with life. Are mm. you living a life that you love? I think so. Yeah. And if you're living hundred percent, it's so never hundred percent. If you're living the life you love, then then. Um, that will be, I would say, if you're making sure that you're living the life that you love, then I think that's really the best way to make sure that you don't get diabetes because diabetes is really your body trying to talk to you. It's telling you something. Did you see this movie, Killers of the Flower Moon? Uh, no. <laughs> it's about the natives how they get diabetes and they love sweets and... yeah <clears throat> yep sugar is a toxin very why much laughing? <laughs> why isn't she laughing <laughs> Your parents talk so No, I was laughing because uh, we all eat so much, especially me. I love sweets. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all do, but we can control it. That's all. That's what it means. We're not saying you have to do without something. Because keeping a balance of everything is important too. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, let's get back on um, um, Okay, so what was the question again? Or was there a question? It's okay. We'll let it go. Okay, oh, okay. Now I remember past life. Yeah. We're talking about past, how, how to bring something from past life. All that. Thing about past life, working with past life, and I, I remember um, Sue James mentioning about you know you can actually get a, um, a a body part from another version of yourself. I think all that. So, I don't think he did that way. He was just showing us that you have to look at a picture of a healthy heart. But if you're looking at a picture. I would still say, how do you know that is a healthy heart? <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's so you are actually teaching your body, you're teaching your consciousness what you want. Yeah, I think that is the point because you are you're teaching. So you're working with your body, and our body can actually do a lot more especially if you work with it it actually can do a lot more than we give it credit for so that is what all that is and actually yeah. our body now it um it heals faster it is capable of healing faster when you um, when you shift your consciousness as well. So it's really about creating a different relationship with your body. Can you go back and can you use past life? Sure. However, I you don't have to because you get access to everything in this life already. Um, 
in the moment, you actually have access to everything. You don't have to go back to past life because past life is, it's in our consciousness. Yeah. And you can actually just create what you actually want by just communicating with your body. It is in our consciousness, but we we are not remembering it, right? So, isn't that called subconscious then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, let's say if you want a um, a healthy organ, then you just need to look at, um, for example, just a picture. Yeah. If you go, then you can do that. Just let so you're really communicating with your body. Okay, I want, let's say, a healthy kidney. Then go and look up what a healthy kidney is uh, in a human being is supposed to look like. And then, and then um, communicate with your body that this is actually what you want. And then work with your body come to create that for yourself and you support your body as well so don't just say oh i want uh, i want healthy lungs and then you keep smoking Smoke. then yeah then then you're being inconsistent because one in one on one hand you want healthy lungs and then the other hand you're doing something that is known to cause troubles with your lungs then and you're being inconsistent then you know your your body's like what the heck this this lady actually want yeah. so be consistent just let your body know what it is and be consistent don't try to you know say i want one thing and then you do something to undermine yourself undermine us. Sounds good. Yep, practical. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So, can we begin now? Or any other questions? No, go ahead. Okay. Please.